Hi everyone, I'm George Favar and welcome to Jax 83. Jacksonville as it was in the year 1983. I'm pleased to bring you this year by year series of Jacksonville history and we begin Jax 83 inside the Florida Theater. Opened in April 1927, it closed in 1980 and reopened in August of 1983. I'm going to talk with you about the history of the theater, but first I want to talk with you about the first time I walked inside the Florida Theater. I consider the Florida Theater to be the jewel in Jacksonville's crown. It's an ornate movie palace built in the 1920s. And after it reopened, I had the privilege as a student on a field trip to sit in one of these seats and to see a performance. Now, if the course of my life from 1982 had continued without a big change, I would have attended the field trip, attended the Florida Theater as a, as a student of Arlington Heights Elementary. Instead, I arrived as a student of Crown Point Elementary. And I'll have more on that later. Here we see May 2017 shots and an October 2013 shot of the Florida Theater. And now we go back in time to when the building was going up in the 1920s. The booming 1920s, a booming time for Jacksonville. Downtown was growing and we needed to have a big theater. And so the Florida Theater was constructed. Here we see the, uh, the cars and we see the building and the marquee. And if you take a look, Mediterranean Revival architecture, Forsyth Street in front of the theater. So there's a lot of history in here. We see where up until a certain point in the 1930s, there was a roof garden. Okay. And we see the plans for the theater, the blueprints. So, uh, definitely uh, a, a big place for a lot to happen, okay? Because back then, you know, we had vaudeville, then we had movies coming along, motion pictures with sound coming in 1928 uh, with The Jazz Singer, the movie The Jazz Singer. So, we can look down Forsyth Street and we can look at uh, the Florida Theater in 1933, uh, we see the uh, uh, employees of the theater. Then let's go ahead and take a look at the 1950s. August 1956, Elvis Presley comes to town. Now he's been performing throughout the South, and, and it's not his first visit to Jacksonville. He had visited the prior year, but suddenly there was a lot of controversy because Elvis really liked to dance, really perform, for the audience, a lot of girls out there. Um, he was a teen heartthrob, and the uh, the uh, evangelical uh, people, um, the um, religious people of Jacksonville, were not having it. They did not like it. And here we see uh, later disgraced uh, minister Bob Gray of the uh, Trinity Baptist Church. And uh, here he's protesting, talking about uh, this, this upcoming concert. So they try to stop it. They try to stop this concert that's supposed to be at the Florida Theater. And, and Judge Marvin Gooding represents these interests. And they meet, he meets with Elvis, okay? He meets with Elvis Presley. But, you know, everything works out. The show goes forward. The fans are there. And there are police officers there, and in the back is the judge, and uh, so uh, you know, so in the back is the judge, 
And I mean, it's the 1950s, okay? And ultimately though, he performs, everything turns out great. Now later on, things change, you know, not as much going on at the Florida Theater in the 1970s, starting in 1972, they began putting up, you know, um, kung fu movies, um, uh, also uh, uh, black exploitation type movies, Shaft, uh, movies like that. Um, uh, And so here, uh, we see an ad uh, for a kung fu movie, and we, we note on the left-hand corner there, it's R-rated, and it mentions the Florida Theater. So you could go see a kung fu movie in the Florida Theater, but then it closed in 1980. Now, here we come to the point where it's getting ready to reopen. Okay, so uh, a special time for the city because you have a renaissance, a rebirth of an institution, you could say, of a, of a, uh, certainly a performing arts palace. And certainly a lot could happen at the Florida Theater. And so people were very excited about it coming back. Uh, it had been put on the National Register of Historic Places in 1982. A lot of work was done on it for it to open in August 1983. Uh, and I remember seeing the Nutcracker Ballet in the Florida theater, but being so fascinated by the interior ornateness detail, uh, just being so uh, amazed by it, uh, that uh, it really captured my imagination. That special day, my first time being in the Florida theater, was a day that I'll never forget because I saw the grandness of downtown Jacksonville and the history of Jacksonville. So as we we head out of the auditorium, as we head out of the Florida Theater, and we go out into, further into Jack 83, we come upon Southern Bell. Do you remember Southern Bell, the, the phone company? Before around 1984, the Southern Bell Company uh, was the phone company. We had deregulation later on in the 1980s. Uh, Now, what does all of this mean for Jacksonville in 83? Well, it was time for Southern Bell to build a big, huge building, a skyscraper. We see the illustration of what the building was projected to look like. And we see uh, in the distance, beyond it, we see the, the, um, the old Jacksonville Terminal building, which at that point was abandoned. It would eventually be our, become our convention center later on in the 1980s. Just behind uh, the skyscraper, we see what we still have today, the federal building. Just uh, to, towards us in the left-hand corner is at the time it was the Atlantic Bank building. Okay, so, um, so, so you're kind of getting an idea, you know, of what what they thought was going to happen. Now there was also a company called Charter Company, and in the late '70s it was flying high on a lot of oil revenue. But in the early 1980s the business uh, turned downward, uh, oil prices dropped, and but it was at one point though Charter Company. Uh, was expected to join uh, Southern Bell in this new skyscraper that was to be built. A uh, charter company, uh, and this is uh, a picture of it. Now, we know it today in 2018, we know it as the JEA headquarters, okay? It was originally built in the 1960s as the Universal Marion Building. Uh, now, here is a picture of it in 2014 uh, as JEA, Jacksonville Electric Authority headquarters. Now, eventually, it's planned for the JEA to uh, move and have their headquarters operations elsewhere, okay? But at one point, uh, charter company was going to that were they, uh, that was going to they were going to go into this this uh, into this uh, skyscraper along with Southern Bell, but that was not to be. That was not to be. Now here we see Southern Bell building amidst downtown in 1986. Okay, so there's a couple years after 1983. This gives you an idea of of, of what ultimately happened with all of that uh, planning and and construction. 
and we see down the road development on the riverfront there's a lot that's going on uh, there's a lot that's happening and in 1983 mayor Jake Godbold was running for re-election and so with all the different things happening with the economy being as rough as it was what happened well he got reelected he got reelected with 71 percent of the vote people really liked him now not to say that there weren't problems in Jacksonville there were a lot of problems what would later become a, a real big problem uh, for Jacksonville for Duval County was the overcrowding at the jail okay ultimately would result in what our, our current jail uh, in it being constructed uh, there were lawsuits things like that and in this uh, political cartoon by Ed Gamble uh, from 1983 we see where it shows a city council uh, figuratively uh, outside the jail and it says you know the solution to the problem of overcrowding is to appoint another study commission let another one go Dale and you see the judge with with a, uh, a wrongdoer and so they're having to make decisions because there's a lot of in the 1980s you know there starts to be a lot of if anything a lot of crime going on okay sheriff of Duval County at the time was Dale Carson so there are these concerns out there and there are only going to be more concerns about uh, crime but there's also going to be concerns about taxes because people are going to go like okay well what am I getting for my money and here in this this uh, uh, political cartoon we see the concerns people have about taxes and with the election being over uh, what's next on the horizon when it uh, comes to redeveloping uh, and also building up the city and being able to to handle things that are happening now I'm showing you this picture uh, this 2018 picture of the Ambassador Hotel which has been abandoned since the late 1990s it was a hotel uh, in the 1980s uh, in fact it was put on the uh, National Register of Historic Places in 1983 so that's why I'm recognizing the Ambassador Hotel uh, in this in this uh, episode uh, of our year-by-year -year series uh, because year-by-year uh, -year, uh, Jacksonville uh, through various machinations is working to uh, protect uh, our historical resources our, our heritage okay and uh, the ambassador hotel had originally been the West Church Street apartments in the 1920s the building was built in the 1920s and it became a hotel in the 1940s I remember walking by it in 1997 and I filmed it and in this picture here is a result of uh, from my filming and we see the TIAA bank the old Southern Bell bu uh, building in the distance now while people are trying to figure out if they're parked legally and and if this is the spot you are supposed to sit there and wait for your uncle to fly in from Atlanta at I had a lot of change coming at me all at once and I had to adapt quickly in 1983 I was eight years old and my father Terry and my stepmother Pat and my half-brother John moved from our home on Morgana Road in Arlington to my stepmother's parents house in Mandarin and my life undergoes a lot of change at this point and I have to deal with it and I have to deal with it quickly and I had to I had to deal with it well and my mother by this time uh, was dealing with health issues my visits with her were ended towards the end of 1982 and uh, she would move to uh, another place uh, to live and it was uh, on the Arlington off of the Arlington Expressway so ultimately because of all of the different things that were going on uh, due to various extenuating circumstances and certainly the desire uh, for a better life uh, this move happened 
And so I ended up at this house uh, that that had, of all things, it had barns, it had a chicken coop, it had a pump house, it later had a rabbit hutch, it had a Doberman, and I was responsible for feeding chickens and the dog, later the puppies, and the rabbit, later the rabbits. I mean, there was all this, all these chores and things to do. Now, at one point uh, there, uh, back when uh, I was living here, there was a fence and there was a gate and so it was different it was very much off the road and we lived a very comfortable life in the house uh and i made friends on demsdale road i uh uh had a friend angie uh, i had uh, friends phil and tink uh they were uh towards the um at Dimsdale uh, and Pine Acres at that house there and uh, so I really had to um, in the years that I was in Mandarin I really had to to kind of come to terms with my role uh, my status in life because at Crown Point Elementary School in the 1980s style was everything even starting the third grade and i'll have a lot to bring you about the great things that happened at crown point elementary and the not so great things happened at ground point elementary okay um i mean <laughs> uh, you know it, when you start talking uh, when you start approaching mid 1980s mandarin uh, that's like the third rail of, of history videos for me and uh, uh, the uh, it's things are quite sensitive and things can go sideways very quickly um, I have a lot of great things to say about some very great people and I won't be saying anything really about uh, people that were not so nice and not so helpful and who made my time in Mandarin a not very fun time okay so the focus is going to be on positivity um, but certainly things will be talked about that will be talked about down the road and these things are what they are because guess what George is growing up age 8 1983 Jacksonville and you know when I walked into Crown Point Elementary it was state-of-the-art it was the school for the computer age I mean, I've got a lot to bring you and share with you and tell you about uh, Crown Point and the different things that happened. And uh, it, there were some really special folks. Um, uh, I'll just go ahead and throw out some names of some great people there. Uh, Miss Terry, special education teacher, because I was a special education student. Miss Dewey, fifth grade. Miss Fields, the librarian. Miss Barnett. Remember Miss Barnett? I like Miss Barnett. I wasn't as big a fan of Miss Barnett. And I like Miss Bonnet. And I learned cursive from Miss Halquist. And so I guess when you think back, when you think back to that day that on that field trip, from Crown Point Elementary to the Florida Theater downtown and I saw this grandness and I saw this ornateness and I saw this this something special and I was able to enjoy the Nutcracker Ballet and I would later on enjoy other performances at the Florida Theater I realized you know on that day that something great was going on and that exciting times were ahead and Things weren't always going to be just watching cartoons and in school, okay? Uh, there's some big things happening, and even bigger things were ahead for me. Some big accomplishments and some big challenges. And I'm going to let you know right now, there's some big tragedy ahead. I want to thank you for watching. Take it easy. See you later.